before you guys popped in, have you guys seen that crayon, C-R-A-I-Y-O-N.com website where you can go and type in a bunch of stuff and the AI will draw it for you? No. No. I've been having fun with it. Of course, I'm not as good as the other people. There are some that make me laugh. When it first came around, people were doing spraying Warwick Davis in the face with bug spray until he runs into the kitchen. And it looks like you've sprayed <laughs> Warwick Davis in the face with bug spray. <laughs> He's screaming. But uh, I did Donald Trump and Homer Simpson at an Antifa rally in the style of the Simpsons. And it's funny because uh, Marge is in all of them. I don't understand. <laughs> How come it's not that good? Like all these AIs I'm seeing, it's real shitty looking. But remember Project Murphy that was around for a few months that we played with all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't that looking. Would, that would produce really high quality images. I, th- I think they're throttling. I think they're throttling or bottlenecking the ability of the AI for public use. Right. Because obviously, it has the ability to do it, and it'll get better and better. Yeah, it and learns can, constantly. Yeah. Yeah, you can pay. I think to get higher quality, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's bizarre app because no one ever really looks a hundred percent real. I think we talked about it before. I did that one, uh, uh, Jeff Foxworthy fishing in a thong <laughs> and that one actually looked real. It looked like he was fishing in a thong. Uh, Everybody looks like a sex doll. That's true. That is true. They look bizarre. Mm-hmm. Computers like, yeah, they all like them that way. Just, <laughs> Yes. Just draw it that way. So we're actually recording on a Tuesday. I'm going out of town for a couple of days to go visit family in North Carolina. North Carolina. Go give me some cheer wine when I'm up there. You ever had cheer wine? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. I it's good like stuff. It. I get right, it at is- Ingalls down here. They Actually, this is the only Ingalls I've ever found that I can find a 12-pack about every two months. What's it supposed to be? What is it like? Just cherry-flavored. Soda. Oh, oh, cherry. So why don't they just call it cherry soda? I don't know. It was a big comp, uh, competitor for Dr. Pepper back in the day. When Dr. Yeah. Pepper first came out. Dr. Pepper. I'd rather drink mud. Metal juice. <laughs> I don't like Dr. Pepper. I'm a Mr. Pib man. Do we like the name Cheerwine? I don't know if we do. I don't, don't like, like it. The no. I don't like the name either. No. It's Cheery Wine. Mm. Yeah. Not a big fan of the Cheerwine. I'm going to put yeah. my foot down. Even even if it would be, even it was like chair wine, it would be short for cherry. Cheer wine. Chair. I've made chair wine before. It's brown. Yum. It's fermented though. So I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. you 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 those uh two bottom buns. I used to yeah. I used to think it was cool and subversive to drink RC cola. Do you remember RC cola? How was it oh, yeah. subversive? Cause, cause you nobody drinks RC, right? You'd had uh, you had Coke and you had Pepsi, and then you had what my mom usually bought, which was just cola. Doctor you know, Thunder. No, it was just it said cola. <laughs> it was either a white label or that red and white brand cola, and it never tasted quite right. You know, it was always too flat or it didn't have the right zip to it. Unless, yeah. unless no, my when I would go and stay with my Teresa in West Virginia when I was a child and they live way back in a holler, but there mm-hmm. was a, a store across the, the river. So me and my cousin Mikey would take a boat and cross the river and then climb the side of the mountain there up to the market. And we would get our C colas out of the vending machine. And by God, was that the devil's, I mean, it was just so mm-hmm. good. So they when you had to bottles. pull the neck on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They were bottles, amazing. Right? Hmm? The bottles, right? Yeah. When they first came out with plastic bottles, you could fold the top over so it looked like a douche bottle. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it anymore, but you, the, the, the way they were structured, you'd push it down and slide it over and it looked like a douche bottle. You're a douche bottle. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, RC was good. Uh, and then there was CNC, which when they did their commercials, they would go, CNC is better than mm-hmm and mm-hmm. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Never, never really. I don't recall trying CNC cola, but the best cola of all time was Jolt. Oh yeah, <laughs> scaring old men <laughs> when you belch. It was so good it killed people. Yes. Yeah, chugged a bottle of Jolt and and then burped so loud in the parking lot that a dude jumped. 
This <laughs> fucking burp had like a, 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 it registered on the Richter scale. Yeah, it just reached Pluto. Don't you think they just took the formula for Jolt, made it like uh, the piss yellow, and then called it Surge? Yeah, or that they put it in a pill and called it Adderall. <laughs> I felt the same taking Adderall as I did drinking Jolt Cola. Oh, really? I tried, yeah, I tried that when Red Bull came out with their cola flavor, but it still had that awful Red Bull taste. God, Red Bull is so bad. I know, it's taurine. Like donkey jism. What is it? Taurine. What is taurine? I don't know. Bull urine. <laughs> okay. Uh, not, that's what we always said. But no, taurine's that, that it's what gives Red Bull its gives you twang. Wing. Yeah, I guess what gives you wing yeah. is taurine. It's a type of chemical called an amino sulfonic acid. It has important functions in the heart and brain. It even supports nerve growth. I bet you if you drink like six or seven cans of that, it's not helping anything. <laughs> no. But for cancer, helping yeah. cancer Dr. grow. Dr. Strange dreams is what you'll yeah. have. Especially if you, you drink, drink it with a lot of vodka. That's not good either. Red Bull mm -mm. And it's good, but I'm wide awake and drunk as fuck. Let's fight. <laughs> I just mainlined alcohol. Oh, I forgot I can't fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fight anyway and get beat up. You won't remember it. Oh, I'll remember it all right. <laughs> I remember a lot of things I've done when I'm really, really drunk. You ever woke up the next day and you don't remember right away when you woke up that you got the shit kicked out of you the night before? No. Yeah. It's never happened. happened to you guys? After you and Dustin went to the concert? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It could have happened to me. Could have happened to me because uh, yeah, I Dustin can uh, attest to the fact that I had the hiccups uh, th probably three times, mm -hmm. and actually, whenever we went back to his house and then I got in my car to leave, I still had the hiccups. Like I drove away with these hiccups. They were so bad that I was like, I got to eat something. I started thinking, you know, I had a couple of drinks earlier. Uh, uh, the nuts that I ate, shut up did not make these cups go away were they brian nuts? so so I, you know so i wheel into the ihop and conyers at midnight by myself Ooh, that's dangerous well so i don't care and mike mike's hall's dark it made me a pizza <laughs> but no uh yeah so i'm sitting in the ihop at midnight with the hiccups and um yeah they did not wait on me for about it was about 35 minutes <laughs> And then finally, the she the lady came over. She was like, oh, "She's training. Uh, they forgot about you." And I was like, "That's cool. Can I have some French fries, please?" <laughs> I had the fucking hiccups. I don't care. I really didn't care. Oh, so that's why Dustin beat you up because you had the hiccups. <laughs> what band did you guys go see? Oh, uh, the Blue Stones. The Blue Stones. Who are the Blue Stones? They're the a Canadian rock duo. Okay. Yeah, they kind of a la Black Keys. Okay. Canadian Black yeah. Keys. Like blues. They're blues rock. It was great. It was a great show. I really enjoyed mm -hmm. it. Um, their first opener, and Dustin called it because the lead singer for the first opener was the guy. What's his name? Nat Faxon. Yeah. Look you exactly to, like What him. is it, Grandpapa from Beer Fest? <laughs> it was yeah. that guy. Nat Vaxine. <laughs> it is. He's, he's the voice of... of uh, the troll on uh, Disenchanted. Who? Yeah. Oh, Nat Faxon. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. I know. Anyway, so the first exactly band was like terrible. <laughs> looked exactly yeah. like him. It was creepy. Same shirts and shit, too. It's funny. It what, time like did, what time did your band go on? Was it like nine? It was like nine because it was done and over with by like 10 30. Yeah. We were so walking this, out of there at 10 30. This actor guy was the opening act? No, it just looked. Like he just him. looked exactly like him. Oh. Just like him. But I yeah, mean, it was they, the very opening hard to act. take him serious. Yeah, the, oh, yeah. He was he was a hype man, pretending to be a rock lead singer is what he was trying to do. Atlanta, but, we love the Falcons. We love Chick Fil A. We love. Yeah. It was like, oh, <laughs> God. In bless between it. every song, it was a you know, come on, everybody, move your hands. We had a fair mix though of of olds and youngs, so I didn't feel I didn't feel like. Ew, we're old, you know, because there was a lot of olds there. Right, and and oh. that was honestly that's probably one of the first. That is the first concert thing that I've been to because I missed the the Letterkenny thing. So it, being out in public like that and people, you know, walking through a maze of people again was kind of 
weird and no one had a mask on or anything yeah. and uh they're coming back maggie yeah uh but I'm, there, actually i take that back there was a couple of people once it started really getting packed there was a couple of people i saw that had them on but but the uh, uh the opener the actual opener for the blue stones was des rocks d-e-s-r-o-c-s mm-hmm. and he he's a new york uh solo artist and that dude is amazing yeah. He puts on the best show. He, I mean, in my opinion, that was that was the show for the night. It was definitely him. I mean, Blue Stones were good, but th- they should have opened for him. Really? Did you guys want? To, I'm sorry. Do you want to talk more about the show? I'm, no, we're done. Are you sure? Uh huh. It was and fine. And then I beat her up, and then we went home. <laughs> okay. That you beat her so hard she got the hiccups. Your transition is just like, are you done? You are done with your, your bullshit story? No, no, no. I did not mean it that way. Stephen. So I beat no. the hiccups out of her, and then we left. No. no. Well, it all went back to the fact that I none of you guys have ever woken up beaten up. I have. Right. What I'm saying, but it was by oh. a girl. A girl How did that happen? Out of me. How did you not remember? Because I was so drunk when she beat me up. I was drunk as piss and she beat the ever living shit out of me like like a like a gorilla she beat me and then i woke up the next morning and i was like oh god and i went to the mirror and my whole face was busted i'm like what happened to me <laughs> and my friend said that girl beat the shit out of you and i was like oh that fucking bitch i'll kill her now see if you, you live today her? in this age someone would be showing you like 16 videos of you getting your ass beat oh yeah and there was you... there was a whole party that saw it yeah i got like the hell kicked out but of it lives there off. it lives there you don't have to like worry about <laughs> the whole world seeing it for the rest of your life are there pictures from that day or did you is it gone you know never oh i maybe my maybe my friend kim took pictures of me i mean you know it, it would be on like a a freaking uh camera on film somewhere i don't know Oh, this was 1991. You no, took the 1990. Didn't develop, develop them. You just took the pictures. I don't know. She may have developed them. I would get in. I'll find out from her sometime. But the point is, no, is the point is, we want to see you all beat <laughs> shit out of that. How many, if a how guy, many... if a guy invites you to a party that you that you just met, maybe you made out with him. Maybe hmm. you met him, then you made out with him, then he invites you to a party, and then you go. That just happened to me. But you don't know that he is such a genius that his girlfriend is going to be at this party that he invited you to (laughs) so how many years later did you get your revenge never got my revenge so you're still waiting you still owe her an ass kicking i mean she i think she used her own revenge to be honest i mean Uh, she had she had fists like sledgehammers so i mean it tells you what the rest of her look like so <laughs> i was petite let's just say that compared to her if that tells you anything but she was i remember i remember seeing her coming across the parking lot at me i was in a car and my friend kim was like oh shit here she comes and she was just like on her knuckles coming across that park <laughs> and i was and i couldn't even move i was just in the back seat like and then she just opened up the door and just started wailing on me. Like, you like that white gorilla from Congo? <laughs> like gorilla <was>. Grod. <laughs> <laughs> so you never got her back. Did she never just- got her back. In fact, my friend Kim, my friend Kim got out and was trying to act like she was going to do something. She was like, get off of her. You leave her alone. Get away from her. But only until the guy who invited me he came over and then he beat the shit out of her that's hmm. how he got her off of me nice. Next thing I, yeah i guess he's like threw her into a chain link fence and shit everybody was like oh they do this all the time <laughs> a couple. i hope they got married and had a bunch of kids <laughs> don't know but that was that was a, a pretty intense beating that i took <laughs> from another chick at least it wasn't a guy that's good no, that's happened to me also. Oh, but I remembered that. That's not something we want to talk about. You were about. asking for it that time. Yeah. Probably. No, no doubt. <laughs> this is why I have so much humility, you guys. That's why I say, if you've never been punched in the face, I can tell immediately. Because you act like it. Are you married to Ralph Cramden? <laughs> <laughs> One of these days. Um, I have a guest on uh, on uh, PopCast this week. 
which will be on the radio at seven o'clock tonight. If you live in Atlanta or on the app, WSB radio app. And uh, of course the podcast will come out Monday. Thank you to my guest uh, from last week, Dan Carroll, the director of media engagement from dragon con, who will be on this show soon. Uh, but my guest this week on that show is Valen Hall. And we all know her as who do we know her as Aunt Tiffany. That's right. And no, those are, are not her real teeth on the TV show. I, she smiled and uh, saw her normal teeth. She didn't have that <laughs> weird, fucked up hill. You got to post that picture you took with her so I can tweet it to Uncle Baby Billy. I will. I will. And uh, she said she'll do the show in a couple of weeks through Radio Labyrinth. So you oh, guys. Oh, cool. Can have well, good. I'm glad I didn't give you any of the questions yes. that I was going to give you. I'll save them for us. I'm glad you didn't either. It ended up uh, being a lot of fun, though. She's really cool. We did the whole, I uh, actually did three segments. And then uh, Greg uh, and I review Beavis and Butthead do the universe and Greg reviews, um, God, what was the movie that he watched and reviewed? Minions. No, no. Oh, he hated it. He, oh, the Elvis movie. Oh, the he Elvis. hated it too. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't, ha- yeah, he didn't like it very much. <laughs> oh, a lot of that's either people either really like it or really hate it. And that's, that's what I'm seeing. There's no in between. I feel Greg is kind of, um, he's definitely a, we like a lot of the same stuff and hate a lot of the same stuff. Yes. And you're not afraid to share your opinion on something. <laughs> no, I do. I appreciate that. And I appreciate it from him as well. And I love his scale of, I think it's uh, 30 or 13,364 stars. It's the maximum. I didn't, <laughs> I write it down every time, but I always forget. <laughs> <laughs> Conan, what is best in life? Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear a lamentation of your women. E.T. phone home. E.T. phone home. Hey, who's that guy? That's Tron. He fights for the users. Tron. Why don't you get a job, Spicoli? What for? You need money. Uh, all I need is some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. So yeah, summer blockbusters. Um, we were looking over some some summer blockbusters from the past. You know, it's been 40 years now, all since 1982, which a lot of people universally agree is probably the best summer for films. And if you adjust for inflation, I think it's the summer that has made the most money ever when it comes to summer films so there's a couple of every a bunch of different magazines have these are the the best movies from the summer of 1982 and we have them ranked well we're not going to steal that but we are going to read some of those but there are a whole bunch of movies that came out in the summer of 1982 and then at the end we'll take a look at some stuff that's still to come this summer uh which is 2022 and i am doing the math right that is 40 years ago jesus christ we're all (laughs) So jump in when uh, we go through this list here. Now, some of these aren't blockbusters, of course, but these are movies that came out in July of uh, 1982. The Secret of Nim. I did not. I like that movie. We read the books in elementary school. Yeah. Who read that to us? It was a librarian. Mrs. Edgerton, right? Yeah. Uh, It was Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. Yeah. The name of the book. And they changed their name to Brisby for some reason. Or maybe I don't know. But they did change it. It's called The Secret of Nim. But that's an interesting story. I was fascinated by it when I was a kid. Uh, some of the voices uh, from the the movie. Uh, Dom DeLuise, of course, played a hawk. You know, he played a crow. Not a hawk. He played a crow. I need a sparkly. Mrs. Fishby, I need a sparkly. Uh, John Carradine. I think he probably played Nicodemus, who was the wise old rat. You know the story, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah where uh, the, the rats and mice were given the secret experiment by the NIM Institute, and they became intelligent. And the whole premise is they have to move Mrs. NIM's house and not get eaten by the cat because the farmer is going to dig it up, whatever. Uh, younger kids in this movie, I never never put two and two together. You had Shannon Doherty and Will Wheaton. Yeah, the other two children mice. Yeah. yeah, Will Wheaton. Steph, are you back? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Do you remember the secret of Nim? Yeah, I remember like the VHS cover. <laughs> I don't remember watching it though. I we I think because we read it 
uh, someone that one of our teachers read it to us. It might even have been uh, third grade. So that would have been Mrs. Nesbitt for us, but I, I don't know or for me anyway, but it was a great story. Good movie. Uh, Tron came out in uh, July of, of 1982 starring Jeff Bridges, Bruce Box Leitner, uh, David Warner, Cindy Morgan, and on and on and on. Of course, there was that not so great sequel that was made uh, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago. But Tron was a pretty cool movie, another Disney film. Uh, and of course, it had the old man in it. Yeah. Or the dude. They talk a little Tron on, on Smartless this week with Jeff Bridges. Yeah, what's Smartless? The Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, Sean Hayes podcast. How is that? Is that a good show? Yeah, great. I'll have to check that out. I'm still not caught up on anything, so that's why we're doing uh, movies from 1982. No. <laughs> uh, a Midsummer Night Sex Comedy. That was Woody Allen and Mia Farrow, Jose Ferrer, Julia Haggerty, Tony Roberts, the usual suspects, and uh, not one that I really care about all that much from Woody no, Allen. It, it, I guess it was funny, but... It's not a hold out. It's not a movie that yeah, holds out. It's not a it's not a classic or anything. Uh this movie wasn't a big hit, but I watched it a million times because it was on HBO and it had Kenny Rogers in it, Six Pack, which was shot right here in Atlanta. Uh starring Diane Lane, Aaron Gray, Barry Corbin, a plastic nut. <laughs> Hell, I'd piss on a spark plug if I thought it'd be doing any good. Anthony Michael Hall, Chuck Woolery. I didn't know he was an actor in movies, but Kenny Rogers was a NASCAR driver. And uh, yeah, uh, I love that movie when I was a kid. I did too. I watched it every time it was on HBO. You know, my stepdad took me to see it at the movies because it wasn't drag racing, but it was racing of some sort. You know, right. and he loved. He always loved precocious little bastard kids. <laughs> Wasn't there good songs associated with that too? I think so. Yeah. yeah. The, oh my god, are you kidding me? At the end of the movie, I bawled my eyes out every time they would play that damn song. It would, I mean, as a kid, I'm sitting there, Bleh. you know, the but song love will turn you around. Love will turn you around. It's your heart. <laughs> it's your mind. <laughs> Talks you into leaving every time. <laughs> Here's one that no one will remember. I know Jeff will. Summer Lovers with Daryl Hannah and Peter Gallagher. Just oh people God. fucking in Greece for two hours. Was it about his eyebrows? No, it's just about people fucking in Greece. No. Young Doctors in Love. That's a Gary Marshall movie. Never seen it. That's hilarious. Is it really? Yeah. How have I never seen Young Doctors in Love? You need to. It's very funny. A Gary Marshall movie from 1982, a comedy. Yeah. It was, it's it's kind of like his, his answer to Airplane. It's Michael McKeon, Sean Young, Hector. Elizondo, Harry Dean Stanton, Dabney Coleman, of course, 1980s movie, Rick Overton. Holy shit. The movie is hilarious. Ted McGinley. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to have Taylor Negron. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, mad. I find I'm it. Mad. Probably on Tubi or something. Uh, the best little whorehouse in Texas came out in July. Uh, Burt Reynolds, Dolly Parton, Dom DeLuise. Not really a good movie. Uh, I was were you? I was like so excited to sneak and watch that when it came on HBO, yeah, and so yeah. disappointed when I got to watch it. Yeah. yeah, to quote Nelson, and I can think of two things wrong with that title: yeah. uh, "The World According to Garp." That was a good movie, not necessarily a blockbuster, but Robin Williams, Mary Beth Hurt, Glenn Close, John Lithgow, Hugh Cronin, Jessica Tandy, great movie, uh, and a good book. Over my head as a ten-year-old. Yeah, but very, very it, over uh, my head. Right. Uh, trans character, right? Yeah. The first yeah. trans characters. Have you seen it since you were a little kid? Yeah, it's boring. It is. Wow, come on now. But it's very, it's very well done and well acted. I'm very serious. I'm very serious, Robin Williams, in this movie. Yeah. Or, <laughs> uh, okay, this is more Steph's uh, speed. Zapped. Yeah, oh, now yeah. we're talking. Oh, now God. we're talking. <laughs> Scott Bale, Willie Ames, and the rest. Probability <laughs> galore. Yes, no doubt. Terrible. He was just zapping chicks' shirts off left mm -hmm. and right, wasn't he? Yep. Wouldn't, wouldn't you, though, if you got zapped powers? Me? No, I wouldn't commit 
sexual offenses. <laughs> That's 1982, uh, though. That's right. They let you get away with, with mild sexual assault in there. <laughs> Especially if you were in a bouncy house with a with a knockoff Darth Vader mask. Uh, he liked it, so it's not right. That's right. That's right. Oh, you're that nerd. <laughs> uh, here's one that definitely uh, will will bring you back to uh, earlier times. The Last American Virgin. With uh, Diane Franklin, everybody's sweetheart from the '80s, Diane Franklin, and then no one else <laughs> that made it out of the 1980s. Oh well, yeah, I'm trying to think. There is nobody else in that movie, right? No, no. All right, now we're getting to a good one. Night Shift. Night Shift is one of the better movies. Ron Howard directed that film. <laughs> Henry Winkler and Michael Keaton work in a morgue overnight, and it is a funny movie. Mm-hmm. Very funny. See, 1982 is a good damn year for films. Look at this. Uh, terrible one right now, Tex with Matt Dillon. Uh, I liked it just because I thought he was that kid. Yeah, but I thought he was cool too, but then I uh, then I, I watched Tex and I'm like, eh, eh, I can live without it. It's a bad movie. Mm-hmm. So let's move to August, okay? There's more blockbusters that come out. In August of 1982, okay? And that's what's important, okay? A lot of people don't go to the movie. <laughs> Things are tough all over. Tommy Chong and Cheech Marin. That was a okay Cheech and Chong movie, but every movie they made after 1980 just sort of became worse until it was just Cheech Marin and Born in East L.A., <laughs> I don't know. Born in East L.A. was better than at least the last two Cheech and Chong movies. Uh, the Corsican Brothers? Yeah, that was or, pretty bad. Just the ones where they're hot. Or high, not hot. Uh, the Pirate movie. This one was sort yeah. of a pop, but a, not a bad film. Kirstie McNichol, Christopher Atkins. Why do you like it, Jeff? Soundtrack. What's the soundtrack? It's awesome soundtrack. Yeah, I agree. Really? Oh, I don't remember 80s, that. 80s synth pop. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I saw that at the movies. My mom took me to see it. I watched it on HBO like 10 million times. Because I was obsessed with Christopher Adkins. Pumping and Blowing by Christy McNichol. You like that yeah. song? You <laughs> never heard that song in your blowing. life. Pumping and Blowing. Pumping and Blowing. <laughs> Come friend to plow the sea by Ted Hamilton. and the You don't know any of these songs. Yes, I do. I Am the Pirate King by Ted Hamilton. How's that go? It's like a, it's like a takeoff on the Pirates of Penzance. All right, so you really do know "Pumping and Blowing," and that's how it goes. Yeah, by Christy McNichol. You've never heard that song, not even during the movie. Did you hear it? I did. I don't believe you. Pumping and blowing. That's it. She sing that in "Little Darlings" also. How that's can it. I live without her? She's all I'm living for. Is that pumping and blowing? That? No, that's how can I live without her? Oh. I can't remember how pumping and blowing went, but <laughs> pumping, blowing. Well, you know how to do those things. You just blowing. don't remember how the song goes. All right. Here's a big, 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 big August movie from 1982. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. What's left to be said? We can't say anything about it that hasn't been said already. It's one of the best movies ever made uh, of that genre, certainly, and one of the best comedies ever made, and it stars everybody that everybody used to like. And, and some, a female director. That's which right. Which was a had, very big deal. It was a big mm-hmm. deal. It was her decision to uh, 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 exploit Phoebe Cates. Uh, that's why I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Phoebe Cates, though, eventually she zapped, zapped herself. <laughs> <laughs> you consider that the 80s American graffiti? Yeah. I actually would. Yes. Absolutely. Who so in that movie didn't become famous? Anybody? Uh, let's see. Sean Penn. He's famous, I think. Jennifer Jason Lee, she's a great actress, terrible at narrating audio books. Judge Reinhold, uh, what happened to him? He's famous, but I mean, Phoebe Cates retired. Yeah, she, she got married Kevin Klein and stopped acting. Uh, Brian Packer, he was rat. Oh uh, uh, yeah, he's probably one of the only one of the few that didn't do much after that. Uh, Richard Romanus, who the hell's that? Oh, he was uh, Dr. Melfi's husband on The Sopranos. Yeah. Didn't the guy who banged uh, Jennifer Jason Lee on the on the bench, wasn't he somebody? 
God, I don't know who that yeah, is. That's Robert. Yeah, oh, Richard Roman, Romanus. Ro- Roman, it. yeah. Forrest Whitaker. Yep. This is going to shit. Then he's going to kill us. <laughs> What's he going to do? <laughs> well, make up your mind, bro. Is he going to shit or is he going to kill us? <laughs> is he going to shit? Then he's going to kill us. <laughs> uh, Eric Stoltz is one of the stoners. James Russo. Uh, he's you know, Nicholas Cage was cut. So you don't see him in the movie. Tyler Negron, I think he's in it. He was in everything, too. He was uh, the, the pizza guy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? Learning about Cuba and having some food. Moving along, Friday the 13th, part three, the 3D one. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. It was good 3D, though. When they had good 3D, where, where yeah. stuff just stuck out of the screen instead of going back into depth of field. I have never seen it. I think you're wrong, Tom. Isn't this the one with the bikers and the and the barn and the hole? The, 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 yeah, it was the one, the first one that he had the hockey mask. He got the hockey mask at the mm-hmm. at the beginning. Yeah, he kills it, the one guy in the van. Yeah, but it is 3D. He kills the girl in with in with the head in the refrigerator right at the very first scene, isn't it? With the ice there was pick. a lot of fun kills in this one. There was a lot of fun kills. I remember the chain kill, you know, where you had the dude looped up in the chain oh, in the yeah. barn. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I remember. <laughs> My favorite one is two, though. Potato sack, know. Jason? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the best. That's the creepiest one to me. Those I like two four. People. I like Tommy. Oh, yeah, Tommy, the little kid. Isn't that... Uh, isn't that Corey uh, Feldman. Yeah. yeah. Corey Feldman. And I think that... Isn't that the one that... Or is it five that opens up with... The guy's digging up his grave, and it's an older Tommy, and he puts the the spike, and it gets struck by lightning, and it comes back to life. That must be five, right? No, but, that's six. Five is when they go to the nut house. Tommy's older, uh, right? Uh, and yeah. they're at the nut house. That's yeah, a good that one. New guy playing Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. Horshack is in that one. <laughs> I can't remember that actor's name. <laughs> uh, here's a real big one. Uh, an officer and a gentleman, of course. A huge, huge, huge film. Richard Gere. Uh, Deborah Winger, David Keith, Louis Gossett Jr., Robert Loggia. It's a huge movie. That is one of the blockbusters from 1982, of course. And one of the best Mad Magazine parodies of all time. Oh, really? What What was that? Of that movie. Yeah, you know how know. they would do the movie parodies? Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, my they, God. Uh, the shower scene. <laughs> the man, you got to look up the old Mad Magazine shower. Because I was a kid. I remember getting the Mad Magazine. And, you know, it's it was brutal. Because <laughs> I saw the movie and I shouldn't have seen it. Right, of course not. But then I, when I read the Mad Magazine and they had the suicide scene in the Mad Magazine and I laughed, I knew something was wrong about me. There's something a little different. <laughs> Good movie. Uh, Paul Mazursky movie, Tempest. You guys remember that one? John Cassavetes, Gina Rowland, Susan Sarandon. That was a, an interesting little flick. Yeah, Cassavetes always picked the nice, weird roles for himself. Right, and Paul Mazursky directed good films, weird films. Here's the big one from August of 1982. This one can't be beat by anybody. Uh, in fact, uh, what movie starring um, Tanya Roberts, Rip Torn, John Amos, and Mark Singer uh, wouldn't be the best film ever made, ever? <laughs> Beastmaster. A Beastmaster. Rip yes. Torn's finest role. <laughs> they kept TBS in business for years and years. I know. I only watched it on HBO though, so you could see Tanya Roberts naked by that river. But the movie was so rad. It was rad. The weird bat creatures who would suck your skin and just leave your bones. They were scary. The class of 1984 (laughs) with Perry King, Timothy Van Patten, before he became a director, of course. Uh, It was a booby movie, or that was a kill. It was a USA Up All Night movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's like class of 1984 where the kids run this school and they're all punks. Uh, Roddy McDowell and Michael J. Fox, who was credited as Michael Fox. And let's see, that's it. That's for the summer of 1982. Later that year, The Wall came out, Amityville 2, The the Possession. These came out in September. I don't know why E.T. is considered a summer movie unless we didn't cover June. So why don't I look at June and see if that's when it came out. Uh, I just started with July. So if we look at June, okay, duh. Uh, uh, Poltergeist, <laughs> Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, E.T., The Extra Cur- the Terrestrial, Grease Two, Author, Author, Blade Runner, and The Thing. So yeah, June was a good move. Uh, <laughs> oh 
my god. He's like, like the best real- month of the whole thing. <laughs> when Gre- Grace 2 came out. Right. I had the pirate movie in there. <laughs> but yeah. not the thing. The thing. Yeah, one of the greatest and movies and ever. Yeah. Pumping and pumping or grubbing <laughs> and bubbing with Christy McNichol. I like the Christy McNichol song in The Thing. Yeah, it's a dog, it's an alien, it's a dog, it's an alien, biting and growling, biting and growling. Annie, okay, if we go to May, you got Diner, Paradise, Conan the Barbarian, Annie, Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, great movie. Great movie. Absolutely a great movie, but yeah, I can't believe, Rocky Three and Visiting Hours, I can't believe I forgot June. <laughs> but Diner, don't you think, eh. Overrated. Over. Way over. overrated. Yeah. Absolutely. Not that good, kind of boring. I think it, it was did better. launch career, but yeah, you know, it was better. It was better probably because movies that patterned it, that exceeded it, came out in the next three years. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Good uh, Barry Levinson though made his career, uh, but yeah, and it kind of a eh, uh, I don't care. All right, so let's talk about what's coming out the rest of this summer. Uh, of course, this week and Thor: Love and Thunder comes out. You guys going to see that? Yeah, I'll see it. Yeah, I want to see it. Uh, starring Chris Hemsworth, Natalie Portman as Girl Thor, Tessa Thompson as Girl Thor, and Christian Bale as Batman Thor. <laughs> <laughs> Bat Thor, Terminator 2. I think that take, it's Tika Watiti, so it's going to be good. doesn't matter. Have you seen those pics of, uh, of uh, Hemsworth? as uh whatever the hell character he's playing in that mad max prequel the furiosa movie uh uh-uh. he is definitely unrecognizable does not look like hemsworth at all is it a mad max prequel or is it a sequel to the last movie it's a prequel it they're going back charlize theron is not playing furiosa because she's gonna be young mm-hmm. and uh it's a completely original storyline but it's all george miller created and directed is it before or after Mad Max? Before this last Mad Max. But not like in the, it's like not post pre-apocalyptic. No, I think it's still post-apocalyptic. Okay, good. Furiosa yeah. grew up in the apocalypse. And it's the girl from The Witch and Northman okay. that's playing Furiosa. Yeah, I okay. don't remember her name. Uh, what else is coming out this month? Uh, on the fifteenth, a couple movies: Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank. That's I don't okay. Nope, which is Jordan Peele's. Yeah, uh, I want to see. Yeah, that. I want to see that. Definitely see that. Stephen Wynn, Kiki Palmer, Daniel Kaluuya. Uh, okay, moving on to August fifth, you got Bullet Train with an action comedy with Brad Pitt. The trailer looks pretty good for that. I don't know if I'd see it in the theater, but I, I want to see it. I think I'll see it. It looks good. It's wacky. Uh, Easter Sunday uh, with Broken Lizards, Jay, what's his face? Uh, <laughs> starring comedian. Shanda Heskar. Thank yeah. you. And Joe Coy. It's a fictionalized <laughs> version of himself. I like Jimmy O. Yang, too. Tia Carrera. Uh, glad she's still kicking around. Uh, bodies, Bodies, Bodies. A st- satirical slasher. I don't know about that. Uh, August 19th, Beast with Idris Elba and Charlito, Charlto Copley. What is it? I don't know. It's a movie with people's names that I can't spell or say. Idris Elba, I can say, stars in this thriller about a man visiting a game reserve in South Africa with his daughters who become prey to a dangerous lion that begins stalking them. You know, this is like a ghost in the darkness type of situation. Yeah, I think I'll see it. Yeah, I'd love ghost in the darkness. It looks like one of those early 2000s crocodile movies but with yeah. lions 3,000 years of longing George Miller's first film since Mad Max Fury Road is this epic romantic fantasy about a woman who encounters a djinn who offers her three wishes in exchange for his freedom have you seen the previews for that? no but it, it sounds is interesting. wild I mean like Moulin Rouge type wild oh neat but yeah it's supposed to be a amazing movie if okay. it looks anything like that last uh love death and robots that water gin yeah mm-hmm. yeah all right so uh that, that's it a bunch of summer movies if we left anything out if there's something that you want to recommend to us just hit us up on social media and let us know or post it in the uh, in the in the radio shack so the latest news on the radio news, 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 news. 
And now for the latest news. Stranger Things season five will be shorter, says the Duffer Brothers. Um, I need to get started on uh, the second half of season four. Um, when does that come out, or is it out? It's out. It's All good. Right. You guys are probably done with it already. Yeah. No, I've yeah. only watched the first one. Okay. The first episode. Both, both of them. Yeah, there's definitely a season five. <laughs> good. Yeah, they definitely, there definitely is a season five. And they're going to be shorter episodes, or not as many episodes. I don't. I don't they. I, I think they probably are going to make fewer episodes, maybe, or sh- shorter episodes. This this whole season four took three years to shoot, so they want they want to get season five shot faster. So awesome. Uh, let's see, and I don't know why you put this in here, but they fully saw a UFO. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. <laughs> it's funny. He's all over social media with that too like is he yeah i mean he's like this is what i saw here's a drawing of what i saw like yeah somebody who has a reach and is damn it he's using it is he drinking again (laughs) oh he really saw a ufo i know to get so excited about it i guess it's better than posting about rovers it's way all (laughs) no i think you know a lot of people have been seeing ufos but just because it's an unidentified flying object does not mean it's from space. So that is true. Blowing and pumping. Hey, let's talk about our sponsors. Our friend Brett Perkins and his business, LDI Repro Printing of Athens. They have all of your construction printing needs, commercial or residential. They have been in Athens, Georgia since 2005. They have fast turnaround and affordable prices. So if that's something that you're in the market for call 706-316-9366 or email them at athens at l-d-i-l-i-n-e dot com um pizza and gyro if you're hungry for pizza and you we love that atlanta pizza and you is a long time sponsor of radio labyrinth podcast thank you to my call and everybody at the restaurant Atlanta Pizza and Euro is driving into the summer with weekly food truck events, teen trivia nights, catering events, and more. One day, and that day may never come, I will ask my call to do a service for me. Until then, please accept this commercial as a thank you for coming to my daughter's wedding. AP&G recently fed around 100 million tailgaters at Atlanta United FC supporters event in June of 2007. Stop by the restaurant and grab a nice cold local craft beer like Gate City Brewing's Copperhead American Ale or Athens, Georgia's own Terrapin Watermelon Gosa. A very refreshing, taut yet thirst quenching brew for the summertime. I lost the voice. I was doing it. I lost it. You don't need an bathroom. orange. Santino will cut an orange out and put it over your teeth and you go and then die of a heart attack in the tomatoes. It was always the fruit that got you, wasn't it, Godfather? It's always the fruit. That's what I said to Johnny Fontaine. You can act like a man. <laughs> but he acted like a fruit. <laughs> Atlanta Pizza and Euro love serving the local community of Conyers, Covington, and the East Metro Atlanta area. I would love to thank them for all their continued support and business through the years. And so do we. Thank you very much. Open for dine-in and takeout Monday through Friday from 11 to 9, Saturday 12 to 9, closed on Sundays. Views, views. Or, 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 or. It's news. You. Yeah, uh, last week we had uh, Stranger Things, which I've watched all of. Crank Anchors starts tonight. And Terminal List, I, it's not for me. Terminal List. It's intense, I started, but I don't care. I started, <laughs> watching, I just started watching the first episode, and I, I just went, this is not for me. Yeah, I've had a couple of people tell me that on the uh, Stephen King page that it, they were trying to, to make a Billy Summers like knockoff. But yeah, terminal list. I I tried to use it, but it's a no from me. Too yeah. boring. No, I mean it's it's exciting and stuff, but it's just not not from not my kind of thing. Yeah. You know, as soon as I saw that war dog, and they were taking that dog down there, I was like, "Fuck you guys! I'm not watching the show." <laughs> right. So this what do we got this week? All right, this week, uh, this is I know, know something you've always wanted to know about. Uh huh. How to build a sex room. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Netflix starting oh. July 8th. Words, oh, nails, and rope. <laughs> this sounds like a smelly show. <laughs> it's funny. She's like this British Mary Poppins who uh -huh. comes into your house and like design talks with you and like you and the, the couple and like makes a room and, you know, brings in all the furniture and yeah. Mm, gross. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a snooze. All right. Number two, Blackbird on Apple TV. This okay. looks pretty good. This is our next big prestige show with a guy. He's, he's like a serial killer, and they, they put a dude in prison, and they say he can get out early if he gets the, the dude to confess. Uh-huh. Looks pretty good. Oh, okay. I'll watch is it a that. series? Yeah. Oh, Ray Liotta's in it. Oh. Yeah, this is like one of his last performances. Yeah, I might have to give that a views. Yeah, I'll give it a views. Yeah, it's a views for me. And number three, views from everybody. Better Call Saul final season start next week on the 11th. Damn. Yeah, boy, Damn. for uh, sure. Final six episodes. I'm snoozing it. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna leave the <laughs> not watch the final six. Yeah, I don't want to know what happens. happens. I don't want to know. People what are happens. freaking out because they're saying. They're saying that guy that was the taxi driver mm -hmm. is is supposed to be in these final episodes, but he's been recast as somebody else, which people are freaking out about. What do you mean? It's not it hasn't been confirmed, but you uh, know the actor that I think his name's Don Harvey. Yeah, played that guy. They're saying you hear his voice in the trailer for for the upcoming final episodes of uh, of the final season, and then it's not the same guy. Okay. So people are freaking out, but it could just be, you know, buzz generating buzz. How many episodes are there? Six, I think. Six episodes. Okay, well, I'll give it a watch. <laughs> <laughs> you and your granddaughter? Oh, uh, I gotta go. I gotta go <laughs> kill a guy and pick up. <laughs> I gotta go sell out. Uh, I gotta go sell Jesse to white supremacists. All right, guys. It's been fun. Thanks for letting me ramble on about movies. Yeah, have a safe trip. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, bring us, bring us back some cheer wine. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> I just pissed in a jug and milk. <laughs> <laughs> brings you cheer. Yes. <laughs> while we wine. Whine about it while you drink it. Keep it canning. Keep it canning. Yeah, can. Okay. <laughs>